second dose of the Michael Deacon program. Thank you for pressing play. We are here to line up your day or night, whatever may be the case here on this island earth. Joining me tonight is a very, very special guest. Mr. Robert Stanley has returned. So Robert, what's going on? Thanks for uh, being here. My pleasure, Michael, as always. I, um, I wish we were speaking under somewhat more normal circumstances sort of yeah, a, there is, this is yeah. the new normal i'm sorry my friend this is it <laughs> and it's only gonna get worse it pretty much is the new normal yeah sadly yeah yeah so i hope everybody is uh very aware of their surroundings at all times especially when you're in public because these days anything could happen and will happen especially as we go forward because this is the final battle we're in world war three it's really not about one country against the next it's about humanity versus the fallen ones which we've we've briefly touched on before however um i think it's time to elaborate on because it's everybody's so suddenly aware of uh, artificial intelligence and that it's poses a hazard you might have seen in the news, I think it was in Europe, there was a man who allegedly was having a conversation with an AI that convinced him to kill himself for the good of the planet. Really? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. All right. Well, look, um, there's no reason to be paranoid, but I think it's, I think it's incumbent upon me having had a very severe um, attack by a strong AI that, that most people don't even realize exists um, back in 1990. And um, I, I'm not sure who built it, but I know it exists because I interact with, with it just enough to know that somehow they can read my thoughts or our thoughts. I'm not the only one, obviously. You know, they're, they're obsessed with controlling us and that which obviously means monitoring our thoughts and deeds increasingly so. And um, so the situation was this, I was living in Santa Monica. I was working as a security guard Prior to this particular event, during a break, I went out and on the the mall there, Santa Monica Mall, as they called it, it's an open air mall. There was a guy standing there and he was putting people's names in what he called the book of life. And how that works is you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and um, then your name is supposedly in this book, which, you know, at the time I really wasn't feeling good. I had severe bronchitis. This guy was really insistent that for some reason, you know, if you make eye contact with these people, that was that was pretty much all the road. He figured he could get me to do this. And I I just didn't see the, uh, what harm could it do, right? Right. Okay, so that's prefacing what happened. Um, it was sometime shortly after that I, that I pledged my allegiance to Jesus, basically. Um, but but why I, did you do that, by the way? Did something in your mind tell you that you probably should go down that road? I, well, the thing is, I'm not religious, and I think I've said that yes. before. I just want to reiterate for everybody, just so you don't get the wrong impression. Just I'm in case, religious. yes, yeah, yeah. And and this guy wasn't being religious toward me, like you got to join our church or blah, whatever. He just said, you, you know, just accept. Because I'd asked him, "What do you mean, the Book of Life?" And he said, "Well, you know, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you, you're going to be in the book, and then your your soul is going to be protected. You're going to go to heaven." I'm like, "Well." <laughs> All right, that sounds good to me, you know, like, uh, seriously, what could it hurt to just say, I do that? And um, I mean, I can accept, I think I mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again. I have a relationship with Jesus slash God 
without having to go through a church or a priest or any of that stuff. That's just the way my life has evolved. And um, if, you know, I'm not condemning anybody, if that's, if, if you need to go through a church, fine, but I, I don't, I didn't. And um, it was a little bit odd to say the least that I would even go along with this guy, um, except that he would just, he seemed so like neutral about it all. Hmm. I mean, he wasn't really trying to hard sell me or anything, but he seemed pretty excited to try. He was out there trying to get people sort of like, you know, when you, you do political things like uh, sign this flyer or well, not flyer, but a uh, petition, sign this petition so we can get this on the ballot. It was, but it was more intense than that. He was, he, he felt like he was actually saving souls or helping God or something like that. Anyway, um, shortly after that, I was laying in bed in my apartment and uh, as I said, I have bronchitis, pretty bad case of it. I felt horrible. And I was laying there thinking, I'm not sorry for investigating the connection between androids and alien abductions. Now, again, this is 1990. It wasn't easy. We didn't have the internet. I didn't have the internet. Nobody did. Not at least that we know of. And um, uh, so I was relying on books and shows and magazines, whatever, sometimes personal accounts. And I come to the conclusion that... Um, there's there <clears throat> the, the alien presence here has already developed probably a long time ago artificial intelligence and or androids and that they were part of according to what some people had said about the little grays that they were actually androids you know and but then it was actually evolved beyond that when i came across the work of a guy named dr beater who was a uh, high-profile attorney in Washington, D.C. Yes, he's got a weird name, but um, and he said some really weird stuff. He was way ahead of his time, and um, I'm not sure where he was getting that information. He claimed he had sources in D.C., which may or may not have been true, but he claimed that um, the U.S. and the Russians had already developed androids, and he called them robotoids or automatons. Uh, robotoids or... Yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, and so I, I figured there was the something going on behind the scenes that obviously they, they, the government, whoever that may be, whatever that may be, uh, didn't want us to know, and that they clearly had an advantage over the rest of us treating us like property. All right, so I'm laying there in bed. And I'm thinking this is this is ridiculous, um, and I'm, I'm not sorry for looking into it. Phone rings. I pick it up. There is a male sounding voice, very loud, yelling, and I'm not sure if he was yelling at me, but I picked up the phone. So, and and it or he was in mid sentence. It wasn't. There was no greeting. It was already on a rant. You know, when I picked it up, there was no pause. It was just like blah 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 blah. blah. I was like, what in the heck? And I'm listening. You got to understand. By that point in my life, I'd already been to 57 countries. I'd heard a lot of different languages. I, I don't speak them, but I'm just. I know. You could tell yeah. earthly languages, right? It, Absolutely. The main thing was the inflection in his voice. He sounded angry. Mm. Or it, it okay, like I said, it's it sounded like a male voice, but it's there was somewhat of a mechanical sound to the voice, even though it was rather fluent in whatever language it was speaking that I couldn't recognize. And there was mechanical sounds in the background, very clear. And I listened for, I don't know, just like 10 seconds or something, just trying to understand what's going on. Then I, all I could think to say was, I'm sorry. And then I hung up and then I realized, oh crap. They got me to do exactly the opposite of what I was thinking and feeling, which is I'm not sorry. And at that moment, Michael, I, I lost all hope for the future of myself and humanity on this planet. And that was the intention, just like that gentleman who recently killed himself in Europe. Uh, strong AI or advanced artificial life. It's not a, it's not a just intelligence. It's an artificial life form, inorganic life form. It can be programmed to do all kinds of things, and not only to lie to us, but to manipulate us, especially if they have the ability to read our, our thoughts. Whether that is through technology or technique, it's probably both, depending on, I mean, I don't think technology, like a, a computer obviously can't, uh, it doesn't have a technique. It, it's using technology to read your brainwaves or the patterns of your brainwaves. 
in any case, I'm laying there and I just, I literally lost hope, which may not sound like much to you now that we're having this conversation, but at the time, um, I became suicidal. That's the only time, first and only time that I've ever felt that way. And um, so I, pl I, w I started planning an exit strategy. You plan to kill yourself. Yeah, in early 1990, because of an artificial intelligence that proved to me, not only was it pissed at me, they are pissed at me at that time, but that they knew exactly what I was thinking and that they knew how to manipulate me. And there was nothing I could do about it. You know, at least I thought there wasn't at that moment, which is exactly what they wanted, clearly. In retrospect, maybe I could have asked Jesus for help. I don't maybe know. Maybe you could have. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty uh, heavy duty there. I didn't. And, and I don't even like talking about it. My wife really doesn't like me talking about this. Oh, no. She's concerned that, well, it's okay. I've mentioned it before, but I think because it's on everybody's mind or most people's minds right now, this is the, this is the topic du jour. Is artificial intelligence, is it a threat? Hell yes. Um, I, and I'm speaking as someone who's actually survived it. Okay, so there, obviously not all artificial intelligence or artificial life forms are malevolent. But, you know, like any other life form, it learns. Um, there's something of nurture and there's something of nature, right? So it's it's got a basic program and then it, it, it compiles on top of that to, to allegedly become conscious to some degree. But information alone is not wisdom, all right? That's the, that's the bigger problem. You know, it's it, in other words, it can just be a very like a sledgehammer uh, in some regard. It just I better tell you the rest of the story, because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here, obviously, if I kill myself. Obviously, uh, yes. And by the way, Robert, just for story's sake, this might sound pretty dark, but how exactly did you, you know, what did you have in mind, I should say, in terms of the way you wanted to exit? Well, that's the thing about humans when we lose hope. It's not so much how you exit. You just feel like you have to get out of here because what's the point of sticking around? And um, in religious terms, like Mary is considered, the mother Mary is of Jesus, is considered um, uh, symbolic of spiritual hope because she brought Jesus into the world courtesy of God that it, to basically restore or to give mankind hope for the future. Because things were absolutely abysmal prior to that. It, like I said, this this term that I'm using, the Great Reset, is not just words. It's it's my way of describing something as process, part of divine mercy. And 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 clearly, there was an intervention from, on my part by the same forces. These benevolent divine forces obviously were watching, just like they're watching everybody right now. And they, why they do you why why do you think that is, Robert? Why do you think they allowed you to sort of live another day? Well, because if I if I hadn't, um, it, there would have been a lot of missed opportunities, not only for me personally, but for uh, the work that I ended up doing since that time to help people of this planet become more aware of who they are and where they are and why they're here. And more importantly, where do we go from here? And was that a part of a, a download that you received from them? Mm -hmm. controlling you to do this under your own free will, basically. No, it was an opportunity. I see. Okay, it's like this. We have a we have a mission, we have a need, and we think that you fit that need. If you choose to do it, we'll support you. That's how they roll. I mean, you know, <laughs> they respect I our I hear freedom. you, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn about this, but you know, What's in, in the chat, I, I, I basically revealed to you who I am, what I do, because it's not just Robert Stanley. Okay. There's, there's, there are those of us who have volunteered to come down here in the midst of the mayhem. And it's dangerous, obviously, because you can become very disoriented. Oh, yes. And again, this is why they were watching both sides, <laughs> watching to see how I was going to react to this particular challenge or series of challenges that came along. Well, I guess it's really uh, okay for posterity. You know, I I just put it out there to privately, but I guess I could just say it this way. I mean, the same way I told you uh, on Skype. Let's see if I can get this up here without losing you. Chat. All right. So some people call me Rabbi. I'm not Jewish. As I said I'm not religious, but it just it just means teacher. Some people call me Jedi, um, and both are correct. 
One means teacher, the other means enlightened or awakened. Jedi, in my understanding, it's actually spelled D-J-E-D, Jed, I. So when thine eye is single, the body will be filled with light. The third eye is also known as the Jed eye, the window of the soul. Um, so what is my actual title, though? <laughs> as if it matters. Again, I'm not doing this for um, ego. I'm doing it just to kind of set the record straight because you never know the way things are going. I, I mean, I'm, I don't want to leave until I'm done with whatever I need to do here or whatever I can do to assist. But, you know, just in case they wanted to really wanted the dark side wants to take me out. Um, so there'll be a record somewhere. Or somebody's going to say, oh, I remember that guy, Robert. He was a. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, and go this ahead. Is gonna sound, this is going to sound weird for everybody, all right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised I'm even saying this now publicly, but um, I am a master of the Melchizedek order, and Jesus is the leader of the Melchizedek priesthood. It's not limited to men, but most of us are men. And um, in order to be a Melchizedek, you must be a Jedi, meaning that you are awakened the raising of the Jed pillar means that the kundalini, some people would probably know it better as a kundalini awakening where the spinal column becomes fully activated or, or electrified and the third eye opens and you, you know, you reconnect to the cosmos. So I am part of this order and really what we're about is um, educating and enforcing God's laws throughout creation. Specifically though, we're focused on these areas of what Dr. Peter Frankich, the guy that wrote the New Revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says we are in a zone of displacement, it's a separate place. I guess most people now are going to call it a matrix, which it is, but it's not the matrix like the movie, um, although they are using artificial intelligence. It's kind of like the matrix, though. It is very similar to that, but it's an inversion of God's creation. So yeah, all right. But it's not it's in, not specifically in a computer. It's just being manipulated or administrated by uh, artificial intelligence. Right. It's, all right. Because some of the so-called angelic entities are, in fact, artificial intelligence. And it's great. It's uh, pretty wild because, you know, we've been, not just we, but a lot of people for a long time have always talked about the concept of a simulated reality or system, yeah. one that we live in. And yeah, mm -hmm. very much like the Matrix. Yeah, but um, it doesn't in a simpler to term. all the creation. But it, as right. I told you before, I'll, I'm going to sorry if I repeat myself, but new people are coming to this uh, awareness all the time. Um, the zone of displacement or the the empire the of the the dark side is expanding, encroaching into God's creation, and that's the problem. And that's why there had to be a divine reset. The, a line drawn in the sand by Jesus when he, God, in that particular format, which was very, very, very specific so that he could actually enter the zone of displacement and not entirely annihilate it. If he did, it would just be over, but that there's then an, op, uh, what do they call, uh, teachable moments would be lost. You know, it, it's, it's a bit complicated. And again, um, I appreciate you. Uh, the last time we were on, I was I was offering people to get a briefing yeah. from me through email. A lot of people wrote to me. I don't know how many people actually are reading that information, but at least they have it. And uh, hopefully they're sharing with other people. If you want the briefing, people write to me at unicuseditor at gmail.com, and I'll send it to you. It's spelled U-N-I-C-U-S, editor at gmail.com, and I'll send you that briefing. It's a, it's a lot to digest. Right, and I'm glad it really resonated with our listeners out there, and I'm glad a lot of them contacted you, Robert. Well, I mean, it's very cool. It's all relative. I mean, if, if I do, like, get 100 email, yeah, I answer all of them, and I appreciate it because it's it's actually helping me. When I help others, I'm helping myself, too. It's called reciprocity. And um, But this is like a drop in the bucket, you know, compared to how many people are on the planet. Um, so I can only do so much. Anyway, as I said, um, I'm not here alone. The Melchizedek order is very much misunderstood. And, uh, there's a, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet naturally, like, like everything else. But this particular little clip that I sent you, um, I think I feel is probably the most accurate. And again, it's just a summary, but it said, um, it is an internal eternal cosmic order. 
and the relevance and importance today is, well, <laughs> it's older than this universe. This particular order is in charge of humanity's spiritual evolution of consciousness. It is the divine consciousness umbrella plan beyond all human understanding and interpretations responsible for providing the driving force that ensures the unfolding of the divine plan for humanity to spiritually evolve. Again, this is this is what I'm calling a divine reset. We keep, we're, our evolutionary process, our path of on has been diverted or subverted. Yeah. All right. So the Melchizedek order directs and oversees the spiritual awakening and advancement of all divinely created beings. It's not just here on earth or here specifically in the, what's called the zone of displacement by some or uh, uh, the forbidden zone. This, this is a very wicked place we're in right now. It's very. not exactly hell, but man, it's pretty close. Some, place, some would say this is pregnant. Uh, well, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. But no, I mean, we, we understand now how we've been manipulated recently with um, mRNA. Right. It's not safe. It's not effective. It's part of this genetic modification the program. But it's been going on for thousands of years. And I'll just cut to the chase. From what I understand is we are angelic beings that have been transformed into uh, humanimals. Humanimals. I or, like that, or yeah. just just divine enough still that we still <laughs> where we have some of the god spark in us but it's it's really dormant and um again they did that they being the mad scientist the lower ranking anunnaki the one-eyed serpents they're not reptilian that's what they call their scientists is serpents they have done genetic manipulation again with the assistance of artificial intelligence they have created monsters monstrosities and so we're not related to apes. We weren't the, – this thing of what Sitchin wrote and others have said about us being a, a hybrid is, again, I, and as far as I can tell, is another red herring of misinformation by these fallen ones who love to manipulate everything because they can no longer create, they manipulate. Yes. Yeah, so – um, and this is one of the reasons I, I, I'm even bringing up the Order of Melchizedek because um, some people have heard of it, but they probably don't know anything about it. Right. And so, by the way, I was just going to say some would consider this prison planet purgatory. Yeah. yeah. But you know what happens in prisons? Some people get rehabilitated. That's true. Some. Who does, who does that? <laughs> well, it would be people who care. People who are in a position to actually help. And that's what the order of Melchizedek is. As I said, it's it's about education and enforcement of the so-called natural laws or God's laws. And education is a big, big part of it. Because they're not when I say enforcement, I mean like I think I mentioned this. I, I don't know. Sometimes I forget who I told what to, but essentially um the way this is all going to unfold is that some of the higher ranking Melchizedek or so-called uh, archangel or whatever, uh, there when they show up here at a specific time. Uh, it's game over. They don't need weapons. They are the weapon system because they are so connected directly to the um, the web of light. They literally have like trillions of volts of electricity that can come through them and disintegrate or dematerialize everything in, in, in the matrix. And it's going to happen. It has to happen at some point because if it doesn't, then they will literally um, destroy all of creation at some point or, or over time they will invert everything consume it and you think this will happen let's say 10 years or so or no michael or if i did I, I probably wouldn't say because i see here's here, here's the thing you know in a, in a uh, military situation there's something called the need to know and you also don't telegraph to your enemies your plans so this is one of the reasons why i have not had full awareness of who i am and what i'm doing here because i'm only a small part of a much larger process but I do have a big mouth and I tend to want to share with people uh, without censorship. And so um, it's, they felt it would be best to keep me um, uninformed about certain things till it was, we're closer to that time. In other words, you don't telegraph your, your plans sure. as much as possible. You're trying to keep it secret. I understand that. Yeah. 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 And anyway, then, enough, okay, enough about Melchizedek, because people are like wondering, well, okay, Robert, wait a minute, you said you were going to kill yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, going back to that really quickly here, I'm glad you didn't do that. And yes, I had, um, it, I had saw that story, by the way, the, the married father who killed himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that that's a that's pretty terrible. But I guess he, I guess he was talking to an AI chatbot about uh, I think about global warming. Correct. And can you imagine that? By the way, someone actually killed themselves over global warming. Of all things. Yes, I'm one of the few people that not only can imagine it, mm. I've stood on a precipice because of what they call strong AI or advanced AI. <laughs> it's way more advanced than people know because we, like I said, the, according to the Book of Enoch, we were given technology or techniques by the fallen angels from our very inception. But the reason they created us to be this way is so that we would be uh, the more animalistic and allegedly more controllable and uh, servile, good slaves. And the next phase is to turn us into cyborgs so that we will be fully more controllable. Compliant. Yeah. Yeah. And it's happening now. Do you think humans will be fully outsourced by robots in the next, let's say, 20 years? No, I think they, we, what's left of us, will be transformed into a cyborg. Uh, so we'll that be fully it, integrated. Yep. Ooh. Yep. Just like the Matrix, but uh, you know, Elon Musk also said AI has the potential to be very dangerous for the he future of the humans. Human. Yeah. Well, it's again, it's a. I think he's dangerous for humans too, though. <laughs> he's also part of the problem. I, I, on some level, I agree. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like he's playing both sides of the fence. Anyway. I, yes. 1990, early. I think it was winter. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And. Um, laying in bed, losing all hope, or I'd lost all hope because of the fact that, oh, I should I should also mention, that was the second time that it was demonstrated mm. to me that I could read my mind. Your thoughts, yeah. Yeah, uh, the first time was when I was up in the mountains of Malibu, I was coming down, um, riding my motorcycle at the time, and I felt that I was being watched by something and this was it was totally dark at night in the middle of the you know the mountains and i looked up at this one particular part of the sky and i met i just as an experiment i mentally said hey why don't you show yourselves i can't do anything to harm you and then they turned the light on and i damn near wrecked my motorcycle because i went into a state of shock and then they shut the light off and i pulled over and i was shaking from head to toe i was just shaking like a leaf and I'm like muttering to myself, like, what the hell's going on? You know, what this is just, who are these? Who, who's, who is this? You know, why are they following me around? And then, I, but, but more importantly, I think that the, I felt naturally uh, a little violated because well, actually quite a lot violated. If they could read my mind at that moment, that means that they could read my mind at any moment. At any moment, yeah. <clears throat> throughout the course of my life which I wasn't too happy about. But once again, what the hell could I do about it? Nothing. Right. I, I basically had told them, I, I, nothing I could do to harm you. So I don't know why you're hiding. All right. So I know that preceded what happened. I just forget the timeline. It's kind of not important. But anyway, so, okay. I'm in my apartment and I just, I had lost all hope and I started thinking, I, 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 what's the point of being here? You know, what is the point of being on this planet? Because it's obviously being run by some thing or some group that that doesn't give a damn about us, and uh, they're not going to tell the truth, and they can just abduct people and do experiments and implants and probes and whatever. I would just it just was really bad, and I and I just wanted to get out. So I yeah, like you guys, you'd ask me, so how do you how do you do that? Well, uh, I'm not a violent person, so I thought. If I just walk off a cliff in the mountains, that I guess that would do it. I mean, it should. <laughs> it should do it, right? I didn't know what else to do. Uh, that seemed like a that seemed like a plan, all right? Uh, the next day or later that night, that evening, I got a call from a friend who said, um, do you want to go camping? Mm. And I, I'm like, where? And he told me, and I was like, dude, is there, is there mountains there? And he said, yeah, sure. Was, oh, yeah, okay. So I, of course, this is not, this was not a good thing in retrospect. I mean, that would have been terrible thing. So, you know, a friend. <laughs> that would have been painful by the way. Well, oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a, uh, anyway, I wasn't thinking about that. I told you, look, the thing is I, I'm sitting here healthy and happy right now, but at the time I was really, really miserable. I was having a hard time breathing and um, I just, I, I just really couldn't cope. So it actually, I was, I kept thinking, well, 
whatever the pain is, is going to be very quick. And, and then I won't be feeling anything about this place anymore. I'll just be out. That that was the logic. And I know it's not good. I know it's not good right. now in retrospect. It's like, that's a really stupid thing to think. Oh, I was being manipulated. And, right. Um, that does I, look. I I I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor, and that's that's just my reality. But um, at the time, it was it was a mess. It was a really dark moment. And um, so my friend said, "Yeah, you you know, I'll pick you up." And I'm like, "All right, great, let's go." And so the next day, we did, and we drove up to Central California to a place called Pinnacles National Monument. It's right on the uh, San Andreas San, um, fault line, mm -hmm. which is huge. But Beautiful I'm just saying, place, yes. you, you, when you're right on it. Oh my God, the, the sound! I mean, we showed up at night. There was snow on the ground. Wow! And it, it 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 just the whole place was humming, humming, and uh, uh, set up. I set up and I was literally sleeping on the the banks of a like a creek. It was cold, and it was just kind of stupid too. But I figured, whatever. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I don't care if it makes my bronchitis worse. It's not gonna. It's not a problem. But that night. I had a lucid dream. I literally woke up in that were on the campsite and walked over into the woods because there was a woman standing there <laughs> in some sort of gown, not a nightgown, it was something else, sort of like Greek looking, whatever. And I I I just walked up to her and she said, If you decide to stay, we will do everything we can to help you. In that moment, she or they restored my hope for myself and humanity. So you could say it was a divine intervention, but I'm trying to illustrate how they work as opposed to the way the dark side works. I don't recall saying anything, but I know I was feeling, oh, well, if that's the case, you know, if you guys, whoever you are, uh, are going to help, I'll stay. So she extended her hand, and in it was a most unusual crystal, one I'd never seen before, didn't really fully understand what it was until much later. If you know anything about the Anunnaki, they have some technology called the Me Crystal, M-A, oh, I actually pronounced May, it's, but it's spelled M-E. All our computers have M-E <laughs> devices in them, by the way, in case you didn't know. Like I said, we inherited all that stuff, good and bad. Uh, anyway, she held out this device, and the May Crystal is essentially a tesseract a um it's a multi-dimensional device and she said place your hand on this crystal well <laughs> i love i've always loved stones especially crystals so i'm like oh gee that's yeah and i went to reach out and as soon as i touched it bam it was like i, I was being electrocuted by you know something and it shocked me so strongly that um I woke up. Now, at that moment, I'll tell you what happened was they downloaded a bunch of stuff into me. That was 1990. So not only did they restore hope, they actually uh, upgraded me, uploaded, whatever you want to call it. Right. I brought see. me up to speed. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is, though, these files, are, a lot of them are very time sensitive. Like, literally, I don't know how they do that, but it's they, they don't unlock until a certain time time code it's weird anyway i woke up and i didn't feel suicidal anymore i, I was very confused which is that's good not, that's new that's not new it's a it's good like, thing who are they <laughs> what the heck uh, um so in the morning i woke up and i walked over to the up this uh, trail to the edge of a cliff where I was going to walk off the cliff. And instead yeah. I stood there and I said, not today, you know, I just <laughs> yelled not today. And there was, there was actual California condors there. I, I oh. mean, if you've ever seen a buzzard, they're pretty big. They're big. Yeah. Condors are freaking enormous. And especially when they come flying by you, like, like literally like 20 feet away. <laughs> Holy crap. That is an enormous bird. And the thing is that they have a history with us. There's some cultures that um, uh, that would literally leave their dead out for um, vultures and or condors to to eat the the meat off the bones, and then they would preserve the bones. I don't know why, but they call it they actually call it discarnating. Discarnating, oh yeah. And by the way, condors are the largest flying birds in the world nowadays. 
back there was a time when everything i mean um dragonflies were like 10 foot wingspan See, wow. things are different these days oh well, yeah by the way that's how condors that's how long their wingspan are by the way nine yeah. to ten feet i believe something like that that's pretty damn feet. big by the way Huge. when you see yeah, it it's up crazy places, like, plus the, there's a sound when they they move on the Ooh. wind yeah the, the wind cutting across their wings is like there's a sh- sounds like whoa that's creepy as hell You're plus they got to find red, that fred face and they're, they're he was looking at me like hmm there's a meal. You're There's lucky a... you didn't get uh, eaten by a condor out there, by the way. No, no, no. They don't. They don't attack. They just they probably just not. Eat. No. No, no, no. They just eat dead. They don't. No, they're not that way. They're carnivorous, but they're not. Um, uh, they don't. They don't actually attack. they to to get food. They don't need to. Somehow, there's always enough food to go around. Uh, yeah, dead animals. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, okay, so that was early 1990. By September of that same year is when I went to a UFO conference and I met my wife who had just come. Well, she wasn't at my time to- at the time. She's just another beautiful lady. You met her at a conference, a UFO conference in West Los Angeles. No she shit. Just- okay. Yeah. She just published the first issue of Unicus magazine. She just, she had, she spent three weeks down in Peru having close encounters and her life had changed mm. completely. Just like mine was, obviously changing a lot so she she saw something out there oh in peru yeah no it saw her oh it it saw saw her yes it they were actually there was entities showing up in her room in um, venice beach she was living there i was living in santa monica we didn't know each other but yeah in retrospect so uh they were inviting her to come see where they live down in south america and more importantly on her birthday i think it was a I forget which birthday it was. Anyway, it was one of one of those. She was having a birthday, and she woke up at three o'clock in the morning, and she said, "God, I have I have skills, but I really feel horrible about using them to sell uh, soft drinks and cigarettes and booze to people." She worked. She was working in the advertising industry, which is pretty pretty horrible, actually. Uh, and she's not gonna like that, by the way, if she hears this. No, no, she told me this. Oh, okay, okay. she said that. All right, you're clear. I'm just saying, she she told me <laughs> yeah. all the ins and outs of it and that how miserable she was. And she asked God, is there something I can do to actually make a difference with my talent? And that's when she got mm. like a 3D holographic uh, vision of Unicus Magazine and all these people and all, all this stuff. And she's, she's like, well, I don't know anything about doing a magazine and the, and the message was, um, just start it and people will come. Interesting. Yep. You guys were pretty much set on a path, uh, to meet one another. And it's very strange because uh, I see a strange correlation between people that have, that have had sightings in, in the past and in present time sort of meeting each other. It seems to go that way uh, nine out of ten times, and furthermore, um, that leads me to me leads me to this next question. Robert, have your parents also had they had seen anything at any time in their lives? If if you know for sure, uh, they have not. My whole family is relatively normal. Relatively normal. Okay. Well, sometimes the parents, lots of times, your know. parents, uh, they see think. things, and yes, there's a weird sort of. Uh, connection there it happens more often than not oh i know and i was looking for it but it's it's not there and and same with my wife she um i mean she's i think she's more well adjusted and normal than i am in some a lot of ways as far as integrating into society as it is right oh, sure now. sure but um uh, yeah nobody in her family has really had anything like that no okay. no and it was again it, it wasn't imposed upon her she just she basically volunteered okay much like I told you I did too. And that's how, that's how I ended up getting an assignment. And the assignment was not only to meet my wife and become the editor of Unicus magazine. She's the publisher. I'm the editor. And, um, that just laid the foundation for, for other stuff that I would go on to do such as, uh, write two books about the hidden history of, UFOs and extraterrestrials in Washington, D.C. Great book, by the way. I hope we get to talk a little bit about that here tonight, too. Okay, so there's two two of those books I, I'm giving away in the briefing. 
those two books really should I, at this point they're free to share I, d I don't care i mean people need to know what's going on there despite the the claims of the government that there's nothing happening um everything that i've documented is um 100 legitimate and it indicates there's a big problem here uh with not just washington dc but we've been lied to and again when I say a briefing, it's really a master class in understanding the angelic relationship to humans, both, you know, good, bad, and ugly, all of that. And that's really what I've been doing. Like I said, it's an educational process, and it's also enforcing things that uh, you might wonder, okay, Robert, what, what authority do you have to enforce anything? Um, well, I have saved three people's lives physically. And that doesn't sound like enforcement to most of you guys, but um, I was actually working security for many years at the time. And um, it's a higher calling when you are given the opportunity to save somebody's physical life. And it's an even higher calling when you're given the opportunity to help people save people's souls. I am obviously not God. I am not Jesus, but I have a good relationship with God slash Jesus. And I have been shown different ways. I've been given opportunities to actually assist. Um, I, I don't like to tell people this, but at this point, I feel like I'm probably off the internet permanently this year. And I know I'm kind of going back and forth with you guys. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be playing games. It's This is very serious. Very, very serious. What's, what's coming is no joke. And um, in the Bible, it says even the elect would be deceived. Well, it's going to happen with the advent or the, now the introduction of a strong artificial intelligence into our society openly. Uh, look out. Look out. So you're done, in other words, um, Robert. You're, you're checking out from the Internet for good. Well, literally for good. Oh. <laughs> because there's, the Internet is not designed for our good or our benefit. It's, that's not what it's there for. It's there to manipulate and make us dependent and ultimately servile. We, they want us to comply. Like I said, ultimately, the, you, they've already said it. It's going to be the, not only the internet of all things, it's going to be wearable and then it's going to be implantable. They want to turn us into cyborgs and I'm not doing it. And okay? that's what's I, happening. I yeah. use, <laughs> because I know better. And um, besides, uh, not only is that a dead end, it's, it's very temporary. I mean, you know, we, this whole, we wouldn't be having this conversation if last month, if a solar flare had actually hit us. I it know that's right. Coronal ejection, and oh, if it yes. hit us, all the electrical stuff would have just gone poof. It'd be over, yes. And that's that's oh, the thing. That's... I mean, it's funny you say that because you know today, I wanted to tell the listeners and everyone else out there that we're pretty much at, you know, we're getting close to about the end of the world as we know it. Right. You know, we're at the brink of a global disaster. You know, there's always a global disaster. There's always a new sort of. Um, thing happening there's always something happening and you know there's always earthquakes tsunamis and yeah. i mean a solar flare i mean all these sort of things can not all these things but some of these things can really electric uh, they could uh, affect the electrical grid and mm -hmm. again again like the electricity that goes out we're all in trouble basically you know hospitals police stations everything mm -hmm. um it, we would be in such a we would be in the dark well, except that that's that's the real dark before the dawn. Not all of us, though. I mean, again, I, I propose this to other people, and you know, they always say, "Well, well there's always going to be these communities of other people." And sure, that it will exist, but there there will be lots of chaos as well. That's always going to happen, and people think that you know everyone's going to play nice. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I, I I'm not that I'm not that foolish to believe that. Uh, no, but okay. It, in Revel the old revelation in the Bible, it said that uh, it would be the, the, the second coming, so-called, would be like the days of Noah. Prior to that, it would be like the days of Noah. And one of the books that I send out to people freely is called The Shining Ones, and it explains in there in great detail <clears throat> of the mass hysteria and um, rampaging murder, the riots, <clears throat> the mass murder that took place among our ancestors prior to the flood. And this was all induced remotely or artificially, uh, probably using like a, what they call, um, there's a name for this technology, 
it's escaping me right now. Psychotronics, there you go. Psychotronics, uh, among other things, you know. So yeah, we're at the very end of the reign of the dark side on this world within this particular part of the their empire. As I said, this planet will be part of the divine reset. It's it, it's really for a lot of people. It's going to be uh, extremely traumatic, but I'm even telling you this now just so you hopefully will take it to heart and and hold on to this almost like a life raft in the middle of an ocean. Um, it all has to be destroyed in order for it to be reset because it's totally corrupt, systemically corrupt. It's based on um, cruelty and corruption and lies. And uh, y you can't, f it's, it's like you can't fix it. it, it's, it it's just totally unredeemable. It has to be completely done away with. So and it, it's I know it's going to feel horrible for most of us. It's going to feel like we're losing everything, but actually you're gaining. We will be gaining the kingdom of heaven. And I know that's a religious term, but and it's it really doesn't explain what I'm talking about accurately. What reset, resetting back to our natural state, our true angelic nature, where we're where we are shining ones. We're truly Anunnaki again, as opposed to this chimeric hybrid type of slave that they turned us into here and other places within their empire. So, uh, well, you know what, what's going to have to happen though, Robert, for mm -hmm. all these sort of things that take place again, this reset, you know, there's going to have to be destruction. Yeah. I mean, it's going to look like it. It's going to feel bad. People are going to feel like they're losing out uh, on everything, but in fact, they're gaining Everything that was originally given to them, their divine birthright is amazing. Our divine birthright is is amazing, you know. And what am I talking about? All right, so uh, living on a planet that is healthy, <laughs> where people are happy, uh, you do work that you feel inspired to do without the threat of being evicted from your home or punished in some other way, imprisoned or something. Um, in other words. All the negativity, and it's hard for people to imagine because we've been abused by the dark side for so long. We're just like some people are still like um, <clears throat> saying, "Well, you know, you can't appreciate the light without the darkness." Yes, you can. Yes, I I know you can, and you will. And you're going to appreciate it a lot more because everything that's that's going on here has been is being recorded for the future generations, and it's it that's the there is some value in that. Actually, there's a, a, an immense value in that, in the sense that you, you know, we're we're not going to repeat these mistakes. We're not going to be permitted to repeat these mistakes ever again. You know, so we're allowed to exercise free will, but in the future, there's going to be more restrictions. So this can never ever happen again, because, like I said, it's not just screwing up this planet, or maybe thousands of others within that realm, this zone of displacement. It threatens to take over and destroy all of creation. That's a big deal. And that's why God got involved. And that's why those of us that are loyal to God through this particular order I spoke about, sometimes sometimes referred to as angels, but it's it's way more complicated than just that. Uh, they We have to do what we have to do. And it's it's actually based on divine mercy because we don't want to see anybody suffering or any planet being, especially a beautiful planet like this, being turned into a... Uh, the, can I curse on the, this? <laughs> you can say whatever you want here on, on tonight's show. It's okay. Sorry. It's, they yes. turned it into a shit all right? Sorry. They, it, they did. I mean, some parts of it are still beautiful, but everything has been perverted or inverted sure. by the dark side. And um, it, it, we... we it, well, even why? the Dalai Lama was um, turned to the dark side as well. <laughs> God. I mean, he was telling a little kid to suck his tongue. I, yeah, I saw it. Good uh, Lord, Robert. That's it's it is very uh, nauseating. It's pretty dark. It's very dark. That's how you know we're doomed. That's how you know this world is over. Well, th and this is how you now maybe you understand why I'm not religious. <laughs> right. I mean, you probably have, if you can, eh, most people have this um, false impression of Yogananda. Have you read anything about him or you know anything about him? Yes. All right. 
I don't think you do. You don't because, think you do? No, I don't think. In fact, I know you don't because they didn't want it. They, they, the organization that was built around him after he passed was all about creating this larger than life figure. And some of it I understand. Oh, well, the, from you know, that, well, yes, from that standpoint, absolutely. Yes, you're right about that 100%. I'm not denying that right. part. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yes. All right. It's in the public record, you, but you've probably never read about the fact that he practiced the dark arts when he was growing up in India. That I didn't. So, yes, you're, you're right about that. Right. So, and again, I'm not here to bash anybody. If you're religious, go for it. I'm not, and there's a very good reason for it. God is not religious either. Man is religious because we've been manipulated to be that way so that it's easier to control us. Those on the dark side are um, puppet masters of individuals, that, that these personas that they keep throwing out there, like um, like Yogananda and others. There's so many, it's ridiculous. There's too many, that, yeah, but yeah. that goes with everybody, though. Anyone put in, in, in a certain place right. of power, that Correct. was, that was, they were allowed to be there because they owe something now right because right. of where they were put right and it's their compromise is what we're saying right it, and it's easier for the dark side to manipulate a few or handful of humans who will then go out and manipulate millions of other humans and that's what brings us to your book no oh, in yeah. dc yeah that's also something i wanted to get into here tonight was um, the fact that um well, I shouldn't say it's a fact, because we don't know exactly 100% if it's true or not. What part? The part where, well, in terms of what's been going on in the world and what's been going on for a long time, some people say that mankind has been manipulated, not just genetically, but through our thoughts, and uh, obviously you're an example of that in real time, but in terms of people in higher positions, in terms of the moves they make, some people say that they're under control of an intelligence from a different planet or galaxy or dimension. Yeah, all of that. And um, like I said, it's, it's uh, taken me quite some time. I would say decades to come uh, full circle from the 1990 when I was looking into this, I was trying to figure it out. And at this point, I feel like I'm, I have a much larger understanding, but it's kind of hard to put into a soundbite. And that's why I put together that briefing. I, I realize it's way too much information for most people because actually most people on this planet don't read. And that's if they well, do, they don't true. analyze the information afterwards and try to come to some, you know, conclusions. A lot of people don't read, especially nowadays in 2023. Everything is consumed in audiobook fashion. Video or video. Realistically, yes. And video, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they want to be, um, they want it regurgitated to them. Yeah, so we are. Have, we're such a different uh, uh, culture these days. The modern yeah, culture is so different. You know what the root of culture is cult. That's right. And and we all seem to want to gravitate towards one cult or culture. Or another, we want, in other words, we want to identify with a group think. That's one thing I've been allergic to my entire life here. It, because yeah, I think it, that, the thing is we're all sort of submerged by the occult. Uh, it, it goes hand to hand with everything that we're involved in. No, not just the occult, the culture. It's still the word cult. Okay, it's, correct. It's, it's, it's a group thing. You're either part of that group or you're not. And I don't belong to any group or groups here. That's right. We're outsiders. We are observers yeah. looking at, we're from the, out, we're in the, we're on the outside looking in, Robert. <laughs> we're not participants in all, any of this. And I've always made it clear, you know, I'm not a, you know, like most people, like a civilian, I'm not a part of society. I'm on the outside. Right. But we're okay. But observers do affect the outcome. And um, I don't manipulate, but I do educate. And there's a big difference because if I'm offering people that are interested, that have a curiosity or a need, and I help them find whatever it is that they're looking for, that's a service that I feel good about. Um, and it's the opposite of enslaving something. It's someone it's called empowering. And that is part of God's law because we're supposed to respect each other's free will and also assist each other whenever possible. 
without any kind of um, uh, con uh, concern about compensation or or uh, praise. It's just something that you do because you feel you want to help, you can help, so you help. And I, I, it sounds fundamental to me. Okay, so it's so it's so obvious, but I, I'm telling you because that's one of the way that they they the dark side adulterated us to everything has to be based on you know um money fame um uh, sex it's it's all perverted the whole damn system like i said it, it has to be taken out all humanistic foundations the way that they've formatted us yeah what we consider to be human is uh it <sighs> It's an adulterated version of our true nature as angelic beings or shining ones. Right. What I mean by that is that's the way they, that's the yeah. sort of idea that they want all of us to follow. Right. Yes, that's the, that, right. Uh, the herd mentality is. Uh, uh, Let's put it this way. That's the archetype of what yeah. an American or any citizen on any continent should be willing to chase after. That's their sort of thought mm -hmm. right we have to uh comply with authorities the authorities we got to obey we got to have right. the next uh nice kitchen appliance the next pill that's on tv the next this the next that yeah the whole consumer era right but it's see now the funny but okay. it's a, it's all attached is what right. what i'm trying to say it all goes hand to hand uh, sadly yeah i agree so but the unintended consequences is a lot of people are waking up it, it's slowly we are it, it's awesome it, yeah it is it is and so the great reset versus the great awakening i guess is the way a lot of people are talking about it um as i said i call it the divine reset and it's it's not just happening now it's coming to a uh, closure on this world now which is one of the reasons i'm even being um able to talk about it because it doesn't matter if they know what is coming i, I think the, especially the higher echelon of the dark side they already know you know what i also say robert thank god for COVID 19. <laughs> it also opened the door it opened the flood gates basically the past two years have shown us how starkly how readily we seek yeah. the comfort and authority of a parent when we feel fear right and we well, held on for dear life to what the government was telling us to do not me and yeah. you but no, those are enough. correct yeah enough we were kind of it. yeah you were kind of bullied into thinking if i take the vaccine then i'm saving a life mm -hmm. i'm doing it because you know i care about my brother and sister on this planet it comes yeah. from my heart that's why i got vaccinated <laughs> that's the message that they were telling everyone and anyone and you had celebrities pumping that message through that little box in your TV in your little uh, living room there that little TV box there right and then controls you mask, if you don't wear the mask then you're an outcast yeah but okay look let's go back a little bit to the Garden of Eden so-called what happened there we were lied to and it modified our behavior and it changed the trajectory now I don't I know there's a lot more that happened than what we're being told that's that's really a bit of a fairy tale but that's what most people, that's the way they look at it. So that's why I'm mentioning it. Uh, we were manipulated. We were lied to. We believed the lie. And now we're living the lie or a series of lies coming from the dark side. These mad scientists, <clears throat> not, not just human, by the way. The, the, the human scientists are basically just puppets for the, um, the, the fallen angels that, that know a lot more than we do about certain things like artificial intelligence and um, genetic manipulation and all that crap. Right. They're, they're, they're really good at that. But um, they were also cut themselves off from God willingly. They did that intentionally. They wanted to go off on their own and do their own thing, have their own domain and be, you know, play God. So, so they did. And some of us obviously got caught up in it it was a curiosity it's like whoa that really that's interesting never thought we'd see that you know um angels turned into freaking animals you know or human animals whatever you want to call it um and so <clears throat> the other thing is that uh we're, we're we've actually learned a lot not just not how to behave but also rising to the occasion i think is the way it's that's the way people 
position in. Like I said, I've I've saved three lives. I didn't even think twice about it. It just it was a reflex. Right. And, it just sort of happened for you. Your instinct took over. Yes. And and in retrospect, I know that that was a blessing. It was an opportunity for them to to uh, for the angelic kingdom to look at me and say, "Oh, okay." If you want to listen to the rest of this interview, please go to.